So the title of her project is Neural Networks Without Multiplications. I'm Gabrielle from Ravenwood High School. Hi, I'm Alan from Macaulay School. So in our presentation today, we use the following roadmap. We first discuss the problem and existing approaches, and then we look to our approach and our key findings. So today, autonomous vehicles are almost a reality, and they have the potential to revolutionize transportation and improve our daily lives. They also hold the promise of alleviating societal problems such as injuries, traffic congestion, and air quality. For our purposes, self-driving cars must be able to quickly and readily adapt to a number of situations. And more specifically, they must be able to recognize other cars, pedestrians, cyclists, police officers, and even the occasional deer on the road and rapid accordingly. Much of this is being made possible by recent innovations in computer vision, such as real-time object detection and classification. And much of these innovations have been fueled since 2011 by the ImageNet database and its associated ImageNet large-scale visual recognition challenge, which have both sparked widespread interest in visual object recognition, as well as a revolution in neural networks. So neural networks are structures that mimic the human brain, and they can learn to make predictions without explicit instruction or feature selection. More specifically, most modern computer vision-based neural networks rely on linking multiple types of layers together. And two key layer types are fully connected layers and convolutional layers, as you can see on the slide. So on the left-hand diagram, we have fully connected layers. Fully connected layers are responsible for object detection and classification. In such a layer, each input neuron is connected to each output. The arrows between the neurons represents the multiplication of each input by a specific, specific weight value. And the convergence of these arrows to the output represents the addition of the resulting products. On the other hand, we also have convolutional layers, which is shown in the right-hand diagram. These are responsible for enhancing the task of object detection and classification by using learnable filters to extract high order features from images or the input. So in convolution, a filter, which is also called the kernel, is shifted over the input in a regular manner. And the products between specific pairs of weight values and input values are computed and summed. These sums correspond to the output of the convolutional layer. And interestingly, we can configure the dimensions of the output by, using, by adjusting parameters related to how the kernel is applied to the input. And so collectively, linking multiple types of layers together allows deep neural networks to achieve near human accuracy in object recognition. So neural networks have vast potential, but they are far from a novel concept. In fact, they were first proposed as a model of the brain in 1943. However, the development of neural networks largely halted until the development of the graphics processing unit, or GPU, in the 1980s and 1990s. GPUs allow neural networks to perform um, the vast number of computations in parallel. However, despite this, even with a GPU, it can take days, weeks, or even months to train a single neural network. And sorry, this lack of speed often inhibits the development of different applications of neural networks. As a result, much recent research has focused on reducing the computational complexity of neural networks. Specifically, some research has focused on addressing a specific facet of the computational complexity the number of multiplications in a neural network. We now discuss existing approaches to reducing multiplications in a neural network. One known method is the use of binary weights, which essentially assigns the value negative one or one randomly to each weight in the neural network. Despite this, um, the use of binary weights can often um, compromise model performance. In fact, it often, in fact, it often makes convergence less likely. Another method is weight quantization, which restricts the values of the weights um, to powers of integer powers of two, thereby reducing multiplications to bit shifts. Again, this method likely reduces the rate, or likely reduces the likelihood of convergence. Thus, the existing methods essentially introduce a trade-off between the efficiency of the neural network and the performance of the neural network. And in our research, we addressed the question of whether it was possible to eliminate this trade-off by simply getting rid of multiplications altogether. And we considered the biological analog of a neural network. That is, the biological neuron. Because in an actual neuron, the amount of neurotransmitter cannot be multiplied, per se. Rather, it is increased and decreased, changes that correspond to addition and subtraction. And so the question at the core of our research was whether it was possible to replace each multiplication with additions and subtractions that could approximate the multiplications. So we now discuss our approach to the problem. 
Our approach is, an, is essentially an extension of the multiplication gate concept. In September of 2016, Lynn, Tegmark, and Roderick published a paper in which they described a simple structure that can be used to replace slow multiplications in neural networks with extremely fast additions and subtractions. They call this concept the multiplication gate, and we harness this structure in order to develop neural network architectures that do not use the multiplication operation. And our architectures are called NMAs, or no multiplication architectures. So we considered two processes involved with the training of neural networks. First, we considered forward propagation, and then we considered back propagation. In forward propagation, the neural network takes inputs and uses those inputs to output a prediction. In back propagation, the neural network calculates the error of that prediction. Then it takes the gradient of the error with respect to each weight. And finally, it uses the gradient to adjust the weights to minimize error. This method, known as a gradient descent, is the most common method for training a neural network. And so we first considered the base case that forms the basis of our research. And so in the simplest case of a no multiplication architecture, um, we created the equivalent of a fully connected neural network with a single layer and a single neuron in that layer. And that is shown in the left-hand diagram on the slide. And so all this network does is that it multiplies an input by a weight and then passes the product through an activation function. And the NMA equivalent of this network is shown in the right-hand diagram, which employs the multiplication gate. So we now discuss our subsequent methodology. Um, after investigating the simplest case, we extend the base structure both vertically and horizontally to create a generalized NMA for forward propagation. More specifically, vertical extension corresponds to increased layer size, which is a greater number of neurons per layer. And horizontal extension corresponds to greater neural network depth, which is a greater number of layers. And we use a similar method to devise an NMA for back propagation through a fully connected neural network. And this network is then used to calculate the gradient with respect to each weight. And these gradients are then used to update the weights in the traditional method. So collectively, this allows us to, write, to derive mathematical representations for both forward and back propagation through a fully connected neural network without multiplication. But the practicality of our NMAs is increased for convolutional neural networks, which are also known as CNNs. Because CNNs are much more complex than fully connected neural networks, and they require many more multiplications. So we use a similar overall approach to devising a generalized NMA for both forward and back propagation through a convolutional neural network. But our methodology here differed because we had to account for the significantly larger volume of multiplications, as well as the local structure of a CNN. And finally, to evaluate the potential of our NMAs to decrease computational cost, we derived three mathematical expressions for the number of distinct products that must be computed for a given convolutional neural network. We now discuss the key findings from our research. The first major finding was that we devised um, no, multi no multiplication architectures for forward and back propagation through fully connected neural networks and through convolutional neural networks. So I'll first be referring to the left-hand diagram on the slide, which refers to forward propagation through a fully connected neural network. And so in our NMAs, each four columns collectively represent a single layer of a fully connected neural network. And so in the first layer, we take the inputs into the network and the weights. And the second column, um, the blank boxes represent the hidden neurons that con constitute the multiplication gate. There are four for each multiplication. In the third column, we have the purple block boxes that represent the products between the inputs and the weights. And in the fourth column, we pass sums of the products from the third column through the activation function. And so each four columns represent a single layer. Now in the right-hand diagram, um, we show back propagation and we employ a similar design. Um, this time we replace the multiplications with multiplication gates um, so that we can calculate the gradient of the error with respect to each weight. We then devise generalized no multiplication architectures for convolutional neural networks. So again, I'll be referring to the left-hand diagram for propagation. So in the first column, we take the input image, so that contains all the pixel values, and then we take the weights within the kernel. And the second column, um, again, are the hidden neurons that perform multiplication. In the third column, are, in the third column um, we put the products of the image pixel values and the kernel weights um, through the activation function. And so here, each three columns collectively represent a single layer of a convolutional neural network. 
And in back propagation, we employ the simil a similar structure. And this time, we calculate the gradient of error with respect to each kernel weight so that the kernel can be adjusted to minimize error. Our next finding was that we derive mathematical expressions for the number of products that for the number of distinct products that must be computed in convolution. This would help us better understand um, the effect of our NMAs on computational complexity in neural networks. And so we consider three cases, all of which derive from a base case. So the base case we considered was when there are no repeated multiplications in convolution. And then from that, we extended to the first case where there are repeated values of pixels in the image, but there are all distinct values in the filter or the kernel. In the second case we derived, um, all the pixel values are distinct in the image, and then some values in the kernel are repeated. And in the third case we derived, we consider backpropagation, which is essentially analogous to convolution. We now look to the key impact of our work. So first, our NMAs raise the possibility of training and running neural networks in real time on simple devices and using only additions and subtractions. And the impact of this is twofold. First, this allows us to make uh, autonomous vehicles and AI technologies more cheap, fast, and accessible to people around the globe, and especially to people who are in underdeveloped countries. And second of all, this allows us to make the novelty of artificial intelligence uh, become an everyday reality for people around the world. So eliminating the need for constantly customized hardware, such as GPUs, further allows us to democratize artificial intelligence by making machine learning more accessible. And finally, from a broader perspective, our work has the potential to accelerate AI innovation in fields such as autonomous driving, cancer detection, finance, and healthcare. And we'd like to acknowledge our mentor, Mr. Peter Lowen, as well as the Siemens Foundation for giving us so much support and encouragement, and as well as the opportunity to present our research. Thank you. <laughs>